<sighs> Hello and welcome to today's vlog. Most of this vlog today is just going to be a talking head. I'm going to sit here and chat with you guys. Uh, this was something that I wanted to touch on in the last episode, but I didn't get a chance because Hudson had a bit of a dis dysautonomia going on that day. And just, I got busy in the dental work. By the way, hey, got that whole tooth in there. Still a little sore from the injection, but you can go back, check out that episode. Hudson's great. She snapped right out of it, you know, within an hour of giving her her catheter and just warming her up, getting her under the electric blankets like we do. Oh no, you can see behind us, our living room's kind of switched up right now. We uh, moved it around because we're actually gonna be putting the Christmas tree over here in the corner by that window. Yeah, we're uh, gonna be unloading Christmas stuff from the attic today. I uh, definitely need help. Our tree, just the box for the tree is like the size of a coffin and it's heavy, hard to get down the stairs. So I don't wanna, don't wanna take any chances of falling down the, well, a ladder again. I say again, go back a couple years ago, right after Halloween, you'll see what I'm talking about. It smells amazing in here right now. At eight o'clock this morning, seared in the pan, all the sides of a nice big chuck roast and have thrown it in the crock pot and it's been going, well, it's a little after two o'clock now and I've got carrots and potatoes and green beans and corn and onion and bouillon and some mushroom umami powder and a bunch of just a bunch of seasonings in there it just smells amazing yesterday casey said you know i think it's the weather's getting nice and cold and i think i'm craving pot roast could we do that this weekend i said i think we can do it tomorrow so it just smells great in here i just finished eating lunch and just had some leftover spaghetti that we had last night but uh i think i'm avoiding talking about this topic because it might be well, it might be a little bit controversial for some of you. There are some of you that that this might offend. And there are, I'm hoping, many of you that might uh, understand where I'm coming from. I guess, well, Casey, Casey t told me this statement when I told her I was thinking about talking about this topic. She said, yeah, share, don't compare. I guess what it comes down to is I, I worry, I don't worry, I see this all the time. Other special needs parents that are embracing their victimhood. They are that person that constantly talks about the special needs aspect of their life. Now, it's not lost on me that this vlog is, is that, but I think if you've watched this vlog long enough, you know that that's uh, not what I do. I don't necessarily complain about my life. I don't talk about how we are victims in this household. We have a very can-do, living with hope, embracing what this life is, and not trying to live in our sorrow or sadness all the time, which we have. I'd be crazy to say that we don't have sadness. I mean, I have, I've touched on it. There are other special needs families that I, that I run into in my personal life that I see on the internet, sometimes in other special needs online groups that we're in, as well as sometimes even in the comments on this, on this channel. People leading with how hard their life is. It's fine to share. My daughter has cerebral palsy. Uh, she has epilepsy. She has bouts of dysautonomia. She has, you know, whatever host of things. We have difficulty because there's complaints because of, of prescriptions not being filled correctly or doctors making mistakes or a pain in the butt with our wheelchair ramp. All these things that I could complain about, which I do occasionally complain about, but I don't embrace your sympathy. I never want you to be sympathetic for us. I never want you to feel sorry for us in our life. It just some days I feel like I'm surrounded by special needs families who, for lack of a better term, are addicted to people feeling sorry for them. They've let that aspect of their life completely define them. Even though this dad might be an accountant, he doesn't meet you and say, hey, I'm an accountant. He says, oh man, I'm a special needs dad and my poor son has... X disease. And I understand wanting to 
start with that. I understand wanting to share that with somebody. I want people to know that about us, but I don't want that to be the defining thing, even though, yes, it is so much part of our life, especially if you are a person with a disability. It, it does completely consume your life, but does it define you? <sighs> Please, no, don't let it. Define yourself by your personality. Define yourself by your positivity. Do not look for people to pity you. It's, it's really tough to hear it. I, when I meet someone, because often we're in situations where we're meeting other special needs, um, other people in the special needs world, as soon as someone goes down that path of pity me, of feel sorry for me, of, oh, my life is so hard. And I, man, I realize this person is not someone that I want to spend any time talking with, discussing things. That doesn't mean that when I meet someone who lives a similar life to ours, that, that I'm not willing to have a conversation about those challenges it's just, I don't want you to lead with those. Or that's the only topic that we talk about. That that's the only thing we have in common. Because I like movies. I like sports. I like racing. I like cleaning the yard. I like, I, I'll discuss politics with you. But there are some people that I know that steer everything back to talking about how hard their life living with special needs is. When you hear those people speak, you can tell that they are drained and that they are not doing what it takes to fill themselves up. They are addicted to the sympathy. It feels good to have somebody hug you and tell you it's going to be okay. It feels good to have that, but don't get addicted to it. Don't let that be the thing that you're known for. I don't want anyone to know us as that special needs family. It's not lost on me that this channel focuses on that, but that's not who I am in my everyday life. Somebody says, what do you do for a living? I say, well, you know, I'm a stay at home dad. My wife uh, does pretty well and uh, asked me to stay home for her reasons. And, and you know, I do that. I, I have a YouTube channel. I make a little money on the side doing, but uh, for the most part, I'm a homemaker. I, I stay home and take care of the kids. That's kind of how I sell that. Whenever I'm meeting someone who's asking what I do, sometimes they will say, wow, like, how did you become that? Well, then I can say, well, you know, my daughter has some pretty significant special needs, but you know, that's just what it is. I'm a stay at home dad. And I just kind of leave it at that. I don't want to say, oh, it's nice to meet you, Charlie. Um, oh, what do I do for a living? Well, my daughter has some pretty significant special needs and I stay at home to take care of her poor little soul. None of that. I don't want to hear that. I just can't. I realize that other people are going to go, oh, their eyes are going to glaze over if you say that. I mean, I know mine do. We are in charge of who we present ourselves to be. If you want to let being a special needs, a member of a special needs family, whatever member of that family you may be, define you then do, just just do it. Just sit and wallow in the sadness. It, it is our responsibility to set our mind on a path of positivity, of growth, of empowerment, of knowing that we are not the victim of this life that we live in. We deal with challenges because of it, but don't ever call me a victim. We take control of this life. We take this life and we turn it into something positive because depression and sorrow and pity and victimhood will destroy you from the inside out. It will rot your soul for that matter because that is all buried in this negative energy, this cancer for that matter blackness that is negativity and it just turns you just turns you bad from the inside out and will 
<laughs> suck every part of your soul dry. I don't want to live that way. I don't want to be around people who live that way. No matter how difficult it is. And in fact, sometimes the more difficult the situation that we deal with, when we get through it and overcome it, it's even more empowering. And just like so much strength and energy from like, wow, we got through that. <laughs> Casey and I so many times have been in, in hard moments that once we got through those, we, I mean, we felt like, you know, Hulk Hogan where he's like, you know, pointing out like, like, Rawr, we did that. Look, we made it through. I get it. Sometimes things happen that that you can't get through. I know that. Sometimes this life uh, stops for horrible reasons. But in order to live, in order to truly live, you've got to make it through those hard times. You've got to get through them. Because what is the option to not, to stop, to quit? Those don't exist in my life. To cry and whine and expect others to pity you and is that who you want to be I can't I can't live my life like that at all maybe I'm just born that way but I don't I don't really think so because I think there were times in my life that I was that person I was that person that wanted the pity the sympathy the empathy whatever it is from people because I felt like it would make me feel feel better. And it never did. It always continued to make me feel worse and worse and worse. And the only thing that has continued to make me feel better is finding a way through those tough times and finding my way to changing my thinking. Gratitude. That's what Casey used. Every day she wrote three things that she was thankful for. And some days it was Something so simple, like the fact that we had hot water and she was able to have a warm shower or that we even had water and that she could get a drink of that. Sometimes it was something so small, but in order to write down that gratitude, she had to actually embrace that she was thankful for it, to find three things every day she was thankful for. And it took her such a long time to get through that, but she did. And now with that practice, she has found a new person inside of herself. She just celebrated her 10th year working in her business because she took a really hard situation. She had had Hudson, and then we had Domic, and then she didn't have a job anymore. And she was dealing with that depression, and she took that and said, you know what? No, I'm going to take this. I'm going to take my knowledge of special needs life. I'm going to take the willingness to do the research, to do the work, and I am going to create something from it. And she has created her business, which she helps special needs families to plan their lives. There was, there was basically hardly anyone else even doing that in the country. She focuses on that, and now she's created a very successful business doing that, as well as helped, I mean, hundreds upon hundreds of other families figure it out also. And she spends each day hearing people talk about their hardships. Casey has written her book all about her journey to getting to this point. She wrote a book. I mean, like she spent like seven years working on this. Volunteers with the hospital, volunteers with the state. She volunteers her time so often for making something positive out of a hard life. I was dealing with a depression around having to go from being a crazy life running nightclubs and competitive bartender and traveling and and becoming a stay-at-home dad dealing with a special needs child and I was wallowing in my depression about it also 
And I could have continued to complain that I didn't have somebody to talk to because Casey was gone all day and I was home by myself with one kid who would probably never talk and one kid who couldn't talk at least yet. Now he never shuts up. I took that and I said, well, who could I talk to? Well, I could talk to this camera. I could talk to you guys. I could talk to whoever out there would listen. And now there's almost 31,000 of you that tune in to this channel on a regular basis to hear me talk about how I'm dealing with this life in the most positive way that I can. I don't harp to you about how hard my life is. I want to make a positive change in the world. And in order to make a positive change in the world, I had to make a positive change in myself. And the same goes for you. If you're living in that pity and that sorrow and expecting people to give you that next hit of that sad look or that donated meal or that, are you doing okay? And just all of that as adds to the pit of sorrow. Take that bucket, dump it out, start filling that bucket up with, I can do this. 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 I can do this for myself. I can do this for me. I can do this for me. And now I can do it for others. <sighs> Hudson's going to be home here in about an hour. I have a little bit more cleaning to do, some more editing to do, but I want to remind you guys that to the world, you just may be one person, but to one person, you may be the world. So go be somebody's world. It's just go live positive, go do good for yourself because that person that you may be being the world to is you. Yeah. I love you guys. Thanks for listening to me rant. And um, yeah, I hope this didn't offend you. I hope that you're hearing what I'm saying, and I hope that you'll be back for the next episode. <laughs>